Tas Taslima Akhta will give a lecture on the brave new world, labor conditions in Bangladesh textile industries. And I think um, we know her. We're going to get to know her now personally, but we know her photographs. Um, we know some of her photographs who were in the media um, when we, of course, um, had the reportage on uh, the very shocking uh, situation of non-security, of non-security, of no conditions which were looking after um, workers' rights uh, in the Bangladesh textile. Uh, textile industry, and certainly after that happened, we did have a discussion here because of our supply chain um, in the textile uh, industry. And I would just like to uh, give you a piece of very, very good news. Um, yesterday, the World Press Photo Contest declared the, their result, and Taslima has been awarded the third prize for her photo of the young couple, which we probably will see now, um, under uh, the collapsed um, in the collapsed textile factory in Bangladesh, I think that's really, really good. And congratulations! Hello, everybody. I'm Taslima from Bangladesh. First of all, I want to give a special thanks to Professor Caroline Robertson von Trotta and KIT for inviting me to this great occasion. Here I am to tell a story of million workers who produce t-shirt, other garments, and who work torn to dust <coughs> for global supply chain. Before uh, starting, I want to show you some photos that I have collected from workers' family, and those workers uh, are victim of Rana Plaza collapse. Maybe their eyes tell more than uh, we can express. Uh, I'm going to tell a story about a part of our country's new generation. When they are supposed to go to high school after lower grade, then they are introduced to needle and thread. Coming from ruling villages to cities, the young girls and boys start knowing large floors with machine rows without stepping into classroom. They get introduced to different label tags and names of different brands from all over the world. Those young workers of Bangladesh garment industry have become a part of globalization by stitching labels of international brands like Walmart, H&M, Primark, Chesi Penny, Joe Press, Loblo, etc., and the words made in Bangladesh. Those young girls and boys who are the cheapest labor in the world, if one asks me how is their condition, I would like to answer that we don't need to go far. On 24th April 2013, a garment factory building collapsed in Bangladesh, and more than 1,000 workers' deaths say the whole cruel story behind their life. 
If we look a bit closer, we will find that they are bound to work in a very poor working condition. They have no safety assurance. They are working in such a risky condition where they might turn into ashes or skeleton like Tazreen government fire, turn more than 100 on 24th November 2012. Neither building collapse nor factory fire is any exception. Workers face such incidents in every year. Dreaming of living a better life, millions of people from rural villages gather in workers' boarding houses in cities. Surrounding the garment industrial areas, many workers' boarding houses have come up in Bangladesh. Shirin, Shahina, Polly, Belal, Toslim, and many others who died in Rana Plaza or Tazrin were among those migrants. They don't ask for much. They don't dream for buying cars, house, or any other luxuries. They want only cheap rice, clothes, and a place to stay, a roof over their heads. They dream for their children not to come in the same profession. They have also lives with joy, sorrow, and love like all. Their dream is precious to them like other human beings. They are not only numbers, profit-making machine or products. Now I'm going to show you some of their photos that I collected from their family album of Rana Plaza victims. And maybe through these uh, photos, you can uh, feel uh, workers' dream. All of these workers died in Rana Plaza collapse. But their working condition, their wage scale, no rights to do trade union, and finally the collapse and fire like Rana Plaza and Tazreen say something opposite. In the economy of Bangladesh, ready-made garments is now the largest industrial sector with more than 4 million workers who are also a big part of our whole national population. With only 30 garment industry, this sector had started its journey from early 80s, and now it is over 5,600 in number. Every year, 80% of export earning comes from this 20 billion US dollar sector. Bangladesh is world's second largest RMG export after China. Yet the profit of this giant industry barely reaches to the poor workers who work in subhuman working condition to give some of the most expensive fashion apparels to develop world. Workers are struggling for their minimum wage for living for the last decades. They work on only minimum wage 3,000 taka, that is less than $37 till November 2013. After years of protest, death of 1,000 workers in Rana Plaza collapse, government declared a new wage scale, which is near about $66 per month, which is yet extremely insufficient for humanly survival. All the workers live in house like barracks, a worker can afford only a small room for his or her entire family. Among these 4 million garment workers, 80% women, women labor force has emerged so large in Bangladesh with the development of garment industry. But they are facing exploitation both in household and their workplace. They are deprived of maternal leave, take care, health care, and all other facilities. Even they often face sexual harassment and lack of security. Workers with a low wage can afford inadequate means of life. 
malnutrition, lack of hygiene are common among them. Some diseases are very common that they are, suffer from. One of those is urine infection that occurs because factory management discourage to drink much water to waste much working time in washroom. Workers face harsh reality everywhere, every moment in their life. But who is responsible for their inhuman working condition, low wage, and other crises? Why more than 1,000 workers were forced to die at Rana Plaza? That building showed severe cracks a day before. Why did factory gates remain closed when fire broke out at Tazreen? Do our dis workers deserve it? Does the hardworking, little earning mass deserve to die of negligence and greed of money? How the building like Tazreen factory or Rana Plaza got permission to be in work? Was there any monitoring? How did the owners get permission to run a factory without ensuring the worker's safety? Where were the buyers? And last, if not the least, is it only an accident? It's not an accident, nor a tra tragedy. It's obviously a structural killing that is taking place in Bangladesh year after year. And for these events, we consider the Bangladeshi owners are primarily responsible for not to ensure safety and the state governs for failure of monitoring and allowing it to happen. But let not forget it is the Western demand that led the factories to be unsafe places. Not the Bangladeshi owners are the only people who are profited from the process. But the core Western states, buyers, retailers, all get the lion's share of profit. If we look inside, if we look deep inside to know how this minimum wage working condition and workers are bound to work here in poor wage, we will find the top reason is barrier on workers' trade union rights. All the beneficiaries, local and international owners, government, have deceived workers from their democratic rights as a part of uninterrupted exploitation. Workers bound to stay in the, that condition, often by state forces violence. Our government does not have any proper policy for garment industry and for workers. Government has opened our country as a foreign market. Here buyers buy cheap labor, Garment factory owners strong tie their association and government are more concerned about earning profit by cheap labor than quality work and quality of workers. Workers cannot produce quality product without getting proper wage, security of life, or safe working condition. The industry is surviving not only upon the owners, but the largest part is the workers. Owners only comply as much as they are bound to show off. But in real terms, we can understand it easily by comparing the betterment of condition of owners and the condition of workers. No doubt, garment workers' issue is not only local issue. It's an international issue, too. Global brands, companies, and buyers buy product in the cheapest cost from our country. Are they unaware? of the workers' wage? What is the price even they pay to the, even they pay to our manufacturers in comparison to their retail sales price of consumers? They are making huge profit, but they do not care about workers' living condition and their safety. The higher the stage gains more the profit, and at the bottom, Workers are left like those who were stuck under the building collapse. Nationally, whenever the workers raise their voice for rights, some common dilemmas come in front. If they raise voice for better wage, better work, environment, or against repression, it is told that they are 
sending the buyers away to some other market and destroying the garment industry. And the activists, they are uh, making conspiracy against industrialization. So this is also a situation made the international brands. Now, if they escape and take measures like withdrawing their orders, it will be the ores that will affect the workers most. So both the buyers and national manufacturers must take the responsibility of the inhuman condition of workers. And it is their duty to ensure better working environment. The problem of workers are not only their own, but also encompasses everyone in the world. Bangladeshi clothes are used all over the world. The condition of workers producing those has become well fleshed. Consumers are paying for the products that are colored with the blood of the workers. So if we are not aware of the workers' lives, their condition, just go paying to make profit for the global brands, then we are taking part in this bloodshed. We now also need to demand that fair wage and human living condition for workers as because we are the people who pay for products. Now we should be aware of the facts behind. In our national perspective, the problems of garment workers are related to all citizens. Garment workers issue is related to the question of the democratic transition of our country, the rights of citizens, gender issues, and the national economical development as well. The betterment of buying capacity of greater mass leads a national economy to a strong industrial base. And the buying capacity of people make access to human humanly life that acts as the behind force of democratic society. That makes accountability of government and other forces of society. So our call, take the responsibility, don't deny it, reduce the profit margin. Spend the money for the labor. We would like to have solidarity from the people of all countries in that regard. But we are not under any illusion that it would solve the whole problem, but it can help. Bangladesh also needs to take care of its own problem. We can't be solely dependent on one sector and hand every power to garment owners internally and be very much vulnerable at the international level. We need to grow in a balanced and sustainable way. Sometimes it needs blood to remind you to make a deeper look to the whole process. And the bloods of 1,000 workers have attracted the attention of a lot of people to the need and urgency of change. Rana Plaza collapse has exposed a global local system of exploitation, exploitation, negligency, and cruelty. The process of primitive accumulation has given birth to the super rich class, including many of the garment owners in Bangladesh, and the global process acts no different. We need to stand beside the million of workers to ensure punishment of those who are responsible for Rana Plaza collapse or Tazreen fire. Ensure payment of compensation of the family of the killed. Form an independent commission to review the investigation, investigate into the sector. Fix national minimum wage at living le wage level and to work for establishing a global minimum wage. Ensure that the right, of, right to organize is upheld. Constitute a regulatory body to monitor global change and to take necessary steps to remove irregularities and works in security. The garment industry must be confronted with its global context, global alliance of monitoring, and resistance against deprivation is desperately needed. So dear audience, finally a few words. As garment workers are the largest workers section in Bangladesh, 
Without ensuring their democratic rights, their better living condition, the democratic transition of our country will be remain unfulfilled. Thank you all. Uh, before finishing, I want to show you some photos that I have taken for the last six years. Um, I'm working to document garment workers' life and struggle for the last six years, so I want to finish with some photos. Thank you all.